Okay, back at it again. Let's go ahead and jump on in. I am going to try, I promise, to keep this to be a shorter video. Every time I seem to be hovering around the 44 to 8 minute mark. I think probably closer to 48. Nope, we're going to try to do a little better. I am going to start, there we go. I'm going to start a little timer on my phone. And we're going to try to do better this time. Let's do better. Okay, let's take a look at the map. Um, if you remember, um, last session the U.S. was able to pretty much go into Tainan and take out the VC there through a very choice and chance event. Uh, that was just, that was devastatingly good. But uh, and the one thing the U.S. is facing is, is increasing casualties. They've already had four casualties inflicted on them. I think that's going to have to be the strategy going forward because they have such an aggressive presence in country. And we really need to be inflicting that. That kind of puts the Arvin on the back foot a little bit too because, uh, as we'll see in the next round, their aid is going to take a massive, massive hit uh, with all these casualties. I believe they suffer... Well, we'll just get there and we'll figure it out. But they basically lose aid based on the number of casualties you have there. I want to say it's three times. Don't quote me on that. We actually will go through when we do another coup round. So let's go ahead and jump back into it using, of course, our very favorite um, percentage, which actually I found out, guys, is 47.5. And ladies and, and people. Hey, people. It was 47.5. Look at that. We can actually have a little bit more map and, and still see the cards. All right, we got the Arvin, and then the NVA will come up. Domino Theory. Let's see if we can read these and not have the mouse, like, right on top of it. There we go. Okay. Uh, Non-shaded. Up to three U.S. or six Arvin out-of-play pieces to available, or the Arvin can have the resources and aid each go up, go up plus nine. You know, that actually would be really helpful. We just talked about how the aid is probably going to take a massive hit soon. Um, and they could use the resources. They could use the resources. I, I mean, I hate to just... The thing about me in, in playing coin games is I'm always reluctant to take the events unless they are slam dunk good because you do give up a lot of... I keep saying the word tempo. I don't even know if that's really the right word, but you do give up a lot of operational ability because you are sacrificing the ability to do a special and an op in this case for taking the event. Getting nine resources is big for the Arvin. That is three plus... That's three actions generally doing something. And the aid going up nine, that's kind of big too, because like we, we talked about, the aid is about to take a hit. Uh, the, the shaded event is three available U.S. troops out of play, and aid minus nine. So that's obviously not great, but also like not... If, if I was like, we know that the NVA is going to go next, and, and taking three available troops, yeah, that that's, would be helpful. The, getting the aid to minus nine is, is not... Ought, I mean, it could be really good because it would help them not get a bunch of money first because what will happen is they'll get money first and then they'll suffer an aid loss due to casualties. So I could start inflicting a lot of pain now, but we would rather build up the NVA position. As we can see, this next event, Russian Arms, is like very, very good for what the um, NVA wants to do. So I think they're not going to take this event at all, and I'm honestly hesitant as the uh, Arvin to use this event as well because I don't really care about moving three or six... Uh, pieces out of play to available i mean we have a lot of pieces we could do that with that would that could be nice um not so into it right now uh, maybe i'm making a big mistake there let me know if you play this game and you're like dude domino theory is like the bomb um i'm not gonna go for it i think what we're gonna do instead is we're going to do an op and special because again we could let the nva hurt our resources but i'm gonna take that risk and even though i'm just told you i think the nva is gonna pass you wouldn't necessarily know that um, but certainly if they had the choice between a limited op or the event, the event is, does not help them directly right now. And they kind of need direct help and the limited op again, they are, they are hurting on resources. They don't really want to spend even money on anything really. And a limited op is just, isn't going to be that helpful for them right now. And the next event is so tasty and juicy that I think if I was the Arvin player, I would bet that they're going to pass to get a resource and play this event. I think that's exactly what I would see. So yeah, we'll do the op and special here. Now, I want to start getting governance up because, or I start want, to, want to start using the govern op, I should say, because I want to take advantage of the fact that we spent money to boost up support in towns. And I want to start getting, um, oh, although we do have active rails. They're active, though. Not too worried about that. I do want to start building up our patronage because that is the one way that we're going to long term win the game as Arvin. We need to build up our patronage. We can only control so much territory with our cubes. Look at this, I've already eaten up like five minutes talking about what I want to do. So let's go down here. If we want to govern, we have to do a train or patrol op. Uh, I do only have like four pieces. A train does not sound really awesome. But honestly, 
we want to get these rangers out. I think these rangers are like really helpful pieces and they can do a lot of good stuff. So, cause they can do that kind of like raid and, and it's actually really nice little helpful piece. So we can put them in cities or provinces without NBA control. If it's at a city or U US urban base, we can place rangers. So yeah, we can either do that. We could put a base down if we want to replace three cubes, cubes and put a base down. Could be helpful, but I think we're just going to put it, since we can only put it at a place with a U.S. or Arvin base, it's going to have to be Saigon. So we'll go ahead and do a train op here. Let's put a white pawn there. Okay, so we will do a train op there, and uh, that will cost us three resources. And then we're going to use govern, and so we can do that with any train or patrol. So we do it in one or two coin-controlled spaces with support, and not Saigon. You can't pick Saigon, and you can't pick the space you use for training. Well, that's, that's good for us. We pick Saigon as a space to train in, so we're good. So we're going to pick one or two coin-controlled spaces with support. In each space, we can add three times the population to our aid. That's helpful. Or if we have more Arvin cubes in the U.S., we can transfer one times the pop from aid to patronage and shift it one level to neutral. Oops, that's, now you're seeing the behind-the-scenes sausage making. There we go. Um, so remember that we also have that special capability that we picked up that we can pick one space. The govern does not shift. I think we're going to do that. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick Hue because we have more cubes than U.S. troops there. That's kind of nice. And then, is there another space I would actually like to do this in? Honestly, I think we're going to do an unlock. Okay, both of these are active support. So normally I would pick those spaces anyway because I don't want to throw my cities to neutral and let the NVA or the VC have the ability to rally into those cities. But I really want to keep Hue like, secure. So we're actually going to use our special ability to pick one space that we govern in, not to shift. Um, let's go ahead and do the special first because there's really no... I don't think it costs us anything to govern. <laughs> that sounds silly on its face. Uh, so we're going to basically do um, the patronage. So one times the pop is added to patronage, and normally we would shift it one level to neutral. We can only pick one space because of our sweet capability. So there's two population here. That's hot. We're going to add two to our patronage. Wait, is that... Let me, oh, yeah, there we go. Boom. Hot. Okay, so patronage went up there. You can see we boosted that up by two. That's hot. Um, we're going to come down to to unlock. I'm going to shift it one to opposition and we're going to get one patronage here. So clearly you want to like be doing this in, in higher population spaces, but it's a slow game with the patronage game. Okay, you want to you want to slowly just boost it up. So we did that and then we're going to train. Let's put two rangers in Saigon. All right, these are actually like super useful forces and I think they're going to come in handy later in the faction play. Now we would go to the NVA. The NVA is going to pass. It's going to gain a much needed resource for doing that. Hot. We're going to bring these guys to an eligible over here. This guy is going to drop over there. They come back up. Discard domino theory. Draw a card. Okay, this is actually this could actually be really good. So Russian arms. Why did I move this over? Because I didn't really show that event. Because unshaded. Uh, place any six Arvin pieces anywhere in South Vietnam. You know, again, that wasn't going to be that great for any of, you know, I guess we could place them anywhere. We could have picked pieces up and moved them. That could have been nice. Um, but the shaded thing is really good. NVA in any three spaces places enough troops to double the number there. Huge. And then it free bombards. Oh, so this is great. We don't want to spend resources. We want to get free ops. We want free good stuff. So let's do that. So we're going to pick the event. Because, like, who's going to go next on here? Who do we have available? It's going to either be NVA or the U.S. And look at that. Like, our good buddies, the NVA or the VC, are going to go before the U.S. on this card. So it's actually kind of great because we're giving them the ability to do an op and a special if they want. They also have this event up so they could pass. That would give the U.S. an op and special. You know, we'll see. We'll see. So let's go ahead and take the event. We're going to double our troops. This is so big for us. And we get a free bombard, which is kind of what we wanted to be doing anyway. That is sort of the game plan. Uh, we'll move down four guys. I probably could just say, like, give me four cubes and not do this. But I like dragging and dropping. And then down here we got two, so we're going to bring down two cubes. We're going to do that because I don't want to keep scrolling. I don't want to give people motion sickness. No Blair Witch effect here. Oh, that's a callback. All right. There we go. This is big for a lot of reasons because, one, we can't bombard here to this space because there's not enough uh, U.S. presence and Arvin presence to bombard to make that an active space. We can bombard, obviously, and play coup, and we're going to bombard and play coup. So we'll go ahead and remove one of these guys, send it to uh, casualties. 
But now that we've doubled our presence here, do we now have at least three cubes? Oh, we can bombard Tainan because Tainan is loaded with US troops. And we will do that, send a casualties. All right, so this is great because now we have six casualties here, guys. What we wanna do is get kind of orders of three because now they're gonna lose two of these cubes when the coup round comes. And that's gonna be very, 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 very big for us. So we're gonna do that. That's huge, that event was very good for us. Let's take a look and see what this next event is. I don't really want to give the US an op and special if I can help it, but this might be really good because the VC comes up first. Okay, unshaded event, which the US would probably get to go on. The US are Arvin free sweeps in one non-jungle space. Okay. And then with the US and Arvin troops, uh, then then free assault as the US. So basically they could pick a non-jungle space. They could free sweep with US and Arvin troops. They have to be there already. They don't get to a free sweep op, is how I read that. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong in the comments, let me know. That would be probably helpful. So they don't really have a place they could free sweep, because in a non-jungle space, that'd be lowlands or mountains. I guess they could do it here. We are slowly roll, rolling that back. They could do it here, maybe. Still not very helpful for them. Like, not helpful. Um, what's the shaded event? VC or NVA, free march gorillas in any three spaces, and then free ambush in each, even if they're active. Oof, that's pretty good. That's like pretty hot. But honestly, um, I think we need to be putting pieces on the board for the VC because they need to kind of they need to kind of get some ground back since they lost Tain in. And I'm seeing an opportunity to kind of rally here and put some more pressure on the U.S. So I think we're going to keep the off and special. We want to. I think we want to rally. Do we want to do anything special? Wait, we can pull these up. I keep forgetting we got these. We definitely probably want to rally. I don't know if I want to march or attack. We could do terror. I don't know if that's super incredible. We don't need attacks. We have lots of money, or at least enough money right now. We could subvert if we rally, and that's pretty great. That's pretty great. We can't ambush if we want to rally. We'd have to march or attack. And we've already done moving our pieces out, so they've already been used for the ambush ops. That wouldn't be necessarily helpful. We could do that here and here and get rid of more things. I think that's kind of soup could be good. But I want to hit cubes. I want to hit cubes really hard. I think we're just going to rally and we're going to subvert. So I think we can subvert in what? Two spaces? One or two spaces underground VC gorilla and any Arvin troops or police. Okay, that's what we want to do. How many resources do we have? We have 12. So we don't want to spend like a ton. And, but we do want to put things on the board. I think we're going to do... Oh yeah, we can just do this. I keep forgetting. Let's go ahead and put like... Oh yeah, since they swept here but didn't get rid of us, let's put it, let's keep making life difficult in Contune. We'll do that one there. I do want to maybe start thinking about putting another guy there. That would be hot. Oh yeah, let's put this rally here because I want to get a second base if we can. Let's rally here and get a second base because we how many do we have three bases left. That could be nice. I don't want to pay a ton of money because I do have 12. And again, I, I even last game I was like, oh, we should not spend all the money, but we, we should. So let's spend, let's do that. Let's do those three spaces. Because I only have like six gorillas to place. So I could put like three here. I can put one there. I can put two here. So that's already five. And we're actually, we're going to turn that into base. So we'll have like a few extra to actually place. That's actually kind of nice. I'm already rallying there. We could rally here, and that could be really good too. Let's go ahead and just do that. Let's do that. Okay, so where do we want to subvert though? Where can we subvert? We can obviously subvert in Contum. That's pretty great. Or there's no other place we're actually hanging out with VC or with the Arvin, honestly. So where else could we rally and do that? This has got support. We can't do that here. There's no Arvin there. There's no Arvin here. It's just Arvin and Contum. <sighs> we could go to Quang Nam. Could go to Quang Nam, does not have support. So we actually we'll do that. And yeah, I actually like that a lot. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, this is hot. So we'll put a black pawn here. So we got a white and black pawn here. And then we're gonna put a black pawn in Contum. So we're getting, getting a little crowded in old Contum. All right, so how many spaces are we rallying in? Let's count. One, two. Should I rally here? I'm not too worried about it right now. We're, I will keep this because this is really far away from everything. So I like that. I like that it's far away because it's going to be harder to like throw forces here and do a bunch of stuff over there and it draws them out. I kind of like that plan. 
So we got one, two, uh, I need to get some more gorillas. We need to be thinking more. Three, four, five, six. I'm counting six of those. That's going to take us down to six. Okay, so we're going to put three gorillas here. Yeah, and that's going to be nice, because then if we can rally again later, we're going to be able to turn to two of these guys into a base if we need to, which can be really helpful. And now this is like obviously going to be very difficult to root us out. We're going to put one in Quang Nam. Oh, not coin controlled anymore. That's helpful. We can put, let's put one in Contum. Hot. Ah, so now we're going to have to make some choices. Let's go ahead and take two of these and make a base. Return to available, return to available, grab a base, throw it down there. Okay, that got us three more. So now I can put uh, two here. That means we only have, we did that, we rallied there. That means we only got to worry about here. And I can place three gorillas, which I kind of want to do. So we'll take this one here, we'll do that. So here's, again, I've run out of pieces I can pick, so I can pick off the board and place them where I want. I honestly am going to take this guy. We're going to, like, remove him off the board, bring him up here, and then do that, mark him underground. Um, I could keep these guys here to, like, sabotage resources. I think that's pretty great, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually do this. We're going to take this guy and return him to available forces, right? But we're just going to shortcut it and do that. Okay, it's hot. That's hot. That's hot, hot, hot. Okay, so we rallied everywhere. We did that, did that. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, rally there. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. And we did it. So now let's do our subvert. Here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to simply take away two cubes, and I think we're going to get rid of the police. Let's go ahead and do that. So they, if I believe I read that correctly, they do go active. No, maybe not. No, they don't. In each space, remove two Arvin cubes, replace it with one VC gorilla. Oh, yeah, that's hot. So we're going to take care of these two police, return them to available. And because we did that, we knocked patronage down by one. Okay, that was a good move. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite. We're going to remove one of these and then replace it with a gorilla. So we're going to return that to available. Now we're going to get another gorilla to pop in. Again, I'm out of pieces, so I need to go around and find a place where I can like lose a guy and be okay with it. Yeah, we'll take one out of we'll take one out of here. Oh, that'll work for me. Okay, that's hot. So now we've got that there. We rallied here. So yeah, we basically have been able to boost our presence up and knock patronage down a little bit, and we're like putting pressure on Contum. So the, the center is looking a little weaker here. We might be able to use that to our advantage, or the NVA can use that to their advantage. I think that's pretty great. Let's take a look at how we're doing on time. All right, 17 minutes. We're getting close. So we'll end the faction play there. They go to ineligible. This guy pops over here. And we do a new card. All right, Russian Arms, you were wonderful. Get rid of you. Draw a card. Ooh, Zhou and Lai. That could be good. The Chinese leader, we'll get to that in a second. U.S. is up first. Let's see what this event is. Okay, we did discuss that. The U.S. are Arvin free sweeps in one non-jungle space with the U.S. and Arvin troops. We don't really have a way to take advantage of that. And they free assault as the U.S. Mm, okay. Uh, poor OPSEC. Well, we don't care about that, although... Because I think it's just the U.S. and V.C., right? Yeah, it's the, the good factions are together. So they're going to do an op and special. I think that's what the U.S. is going to do. Now, what does the U.S. want to do here? They have just done a really awesome, you know, uh, clearing out here. Although, if we do not bring this up to some level of support over time, they're just going to be able to rally back when we leave. So how do we want to do that? We probably want to do a train op. Because if you remembered, if it's in one coin-controlled space that we train in, and we can train in cities or provinces with U.S. pieces, it's a little easier for us to do that. We can pay to pacify one or two levels, or if it's Saigon, up to three patronage. We can shift three patronage to Arvin resources. So we can hurt patronage, too, if we want to do that. We want to train. What else could we do? We could advise in each space, sweep, or assault with the Arvin. We can, one or two faces not selected for training, that's hot, or activate an underground ranger or irregular to remove two enemy pieces. That could be very good for us. That could be very good for us. And then we can add six aid. Oof, this might be what we need to do. 
because I would like to airlift. Let's, let's, this lets us move a bunch of troops around very quickly. Uh, we obviously know about the power of airstrike. We've been using that a lot. Let's go ahead and use advise here. I think we're going to train in advise because I want to start boosting aid. I want to be able to use some of these rangers. I think we've got a ranger in a good spot somewhere that we can use. And we can, in one coin controlled space, we can pay to pacify one or two levels. We can place one or two regulars or over to US base. We can place one or two rangers or up to six Arvin cubes. So what we're going to do is we need to bolster a little bit of our presence and play coup. So does that cost us resources if we do that? Where Arvin is placed, yeah. So it does cost the Arvin a lot of money to do that. But they do have four police here. Do I get to put cubes? Yeah, I keep, I'm sorry. I keep looking at this again. Up to six Arvin cubes. Oh, so we can place police that way. Oh, yeah, we're definitely doing that. We're definitely doing that. So we'll go ahead and put a white pawn here because we have a base. We're going to bring some police up into play coup since some police were just totally murdered. Uh, we will do a train here, but we're going to do the pacify there. And then we're going to advise. And we only have one place that we can actually use the advise here because they only have one ranger there. The other two rangers are in Saigon, so they're not really useful right now. Uh, so we'll advise here, okay. So if you remember with advise, in each space we can sweep or assault in place with Arvin that costs zero. That's actually kind of hot. That's actually really nice to give them free ability to do that. Or we can activate an underground ranger or irregular to remove two enemy pieces. Ooh, an irregular, that's our guys. Those are our, oh, this is hot. But we can only pick one or the other in a space, right? Activate an underground ranger or irregular to remove two spaces. And we do one or two spaces not selected for training. Where else do we have an irregular? Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, Ben Den's getting targeted. So we're gonna do that here. Okay, so we'll do the special op first. We'll go ahead and make that active and we'll say goodbye. Goodbye. We will come up here. We're gonna activate the special ranger guy and say goodbye. That's hot. We're gonna train here, it's gonna cost us three resources, but we're gonna take all four of these guys. Actually, we can take all four in the troop cube, which you know what we're gonna do. We're definitely gonna do that. Why not? Let's just get more forces in here. Although now this makes them open to subvert. No, there we go, let's separate these guys out. Because there is a gorilla cube there, so we're gonna to have to keep our eye on that. That can be kind of a nasty thing for them, but we did bring enough police that's so gonna take a while to subvert away like everything if they want to. This will also will allow us to, uh, during a coup round, boost this up with a pacify action during the um, uh, the support phase. Okay, so we did that. We're going to oh yeah, we gonna, oh we're going to train here, and this is where we're going to actually pacify. We're going to use our in one uh, coin controlled train space pay to pacify one or two levels. Now remember, we put three here. We put up to six cubes there, so that costs us three right away. One, two, three. Oh, and because we did our advise, we get to boost aid by six. That's probably the best part about that, I think, honestly, is boosting the aid. So we paid three to do that, right? Yeah, 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 we paid three to, to, to pay for that. And then we're gonna pay, because it costs us, remember, four for each level, ugh. And we have to pay for the terror, ugh. That's like, that's a gut punch, I think. Oh man, that is brutal. That's gonna cost us 12 resources if we wanna do that. That leaves that would leave the Arvin with seven total resources. Is that worth hamstringing our buddy to do that? Yes, yes, we're gonna do that. I'm sure they're not gonna be very happy about it, but we're doing it. Uh, so we're gonna get rid of that. Cause, yeah, you're good, just delete it. There you go, uh, delete it. And then we're gonna pay adjust support, adjust support. Pacify one or two levels. I don't think paying for pacification, I don't think removing a terror takes a level of pacification. I could be totally, totally wrong on that. I could be very wrong on that. Let's take a look. I hate to do this, but we're going to look real quick. Arvin, regular activities, and we coin operations train. Oh no, it does not. So we can pacify the remove a terror marker and then shift it up to two levels. So this is gonna cost us 12 resources and we shift it to neutral, which I think is very helpful for us. And that's gonna take our, our poor allies down to seven. 
might be not a great move, but we're doing it. We're doing it. Um, we need to really kind of keep boosting their aids. We're maybe going to have to advise a lot more to help them get things done. Okay. U.S. is kind of looking out for its own interests. It wants to build up support. It wants to keep the NVA out of here. And we're gonna, that was, that's a nice little move we just did there. Okay, so we got some stuff there. We did that, we did that. All right, in the faction play. Let's do the Arvin and then we're gonna probably stop this video because I think it's almost, it's been like a little over 20 minutes. So they get to do a limited op or event. Again, not super helpful for them. If they pass, they could get three resources. They would go second on this card, which could be nice. And getting three resources is nice. They could do a limited op, but there's nothing they really want to spend money on. I mean, they just don't have a lot of money. Yeah, I think as painful as it is, they're going to pass and get three resources because the U.S. just spent all their money. No, no, no. One, two, three, up to ten. Okay. All right, so we'll discard this, draw a card. Oh, look at that. The coup card came up. So that actually kind of was perfect. That was actually almost perfect use of spending money. Okay. So when we come back, we're going to do the Zhou and Lai card. Uh, there is a monsoon in effect. And then we'll do the second coup card. We're going to have the Young Turks are going to come to power. Uh, that can be really good for us. So, okay, um, that's it so far for um, Fire in the Lake. We're, getting, we're, we're cranking through. We're cranking through. Uh, thanks for watching.